Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about a very powerful deck that I play, uh, Grease Fang Deal Kiba Boss. And what I've come to like learn about, maybe starting to touch about, you know, um, you know, more competitive parts of Magic. And uh, it's nice. It's kind of nice to go to your LGS and and see what those decks are like, because people do have like very finely tuned decks with like really nice interactions and game plans. Um, I'll just go over one, for instance. Right, I thought uh, a, a sequence that I thought was was very strong, um, and in particular, it was basically um, open red mountain uh, into um, a mana crypt and a soul ring. Basically, the mana crypt pain for the soul ring, um, and have that one floating. Um, and then they went into a Wheel of Fortune from there. So uh, essentially they were able to um, exhaust like half of their hand and get very ahead on mana. Um, and then basically draw a fresh seven while binning those other cards that have synergy with their graveyard deck, graveyard matters deck into their graveyard. So that was like, um, like wow, you know, like wow, what a, what a great opening that was. I really think also kind of the important part about that, like and the kind of important takeaway, is just like how strong those fast mana cards are, um, how much of a difference they can make in your opening hand. Um, for instance, just in conjunction, like a mana crypt and a soul ring, um, and then perhaps with like a wheel effect, um, you can see how, how, how strong that kind of synergy is. And uh, whether you have graveyard purpose or not, just drawing a fresh seven there seems really good, right? So, um, this particular deck I don't play, like, I don't have a Mana Crypt in here. Um, I do play Soul Ring. Yeah, that's a pretty strong card, of course, it's very strong. Um, in terms of, like, Jeweled Lotuses, I would prefer to play those in, like, like, four Mana, four Mana Commanders. <laughs> but I could see, like, the benefit of also maybe perhaps playing it in the three color commanders as well. It's still a turn one commander, basically. So uh, whatever way you look at it, um, it could be very strong. So it's always something to consider. It's just nice. It's just, I think it feels nicer to play like a turn one Brago, um, you know, over like a turn one Mario or for me to turn one Grease Fang. You know, those three mana commanders are a little bit different. So um, maybe less powerful on their own, right? So, um, with this particular deck, um, we're, we're focused on uh, resurrecting vehicles from our graveyard and putting them onto the battlefield. And uh, the commander that does that is Grease Fang, the Okiva boss, a one colorless, one plains, one swamp, legendary creature, rat pilot. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to the owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. <clears throat> I've... I haven't changed this deck much. Like, I kind of just have been looking through it, just seeing how it played, seeing what cards I like to see played. And, you know, I, I was actually pretty pretty um, focused on, like, some, you know, kind of um, major uh, interaction with the board. I, like, I had Extinction Event, Toxic Deluge, and uh, Meat Hook Massacre. And um, in favor of, like, um, you know, I love all those cards. I like Meat Hook a lot. I think I, I still like to keep that. Just because of um, kind of those, the the dying synergy that I have with the creatures, um, and then favor for the like extinction event and um, toxic deluge, I found a deadly relic because I just really like that card. Like so, so less less focus on like mass board wiping, um, maybe for a more targeted um, interaction I have with the deadly relic, and then uh, and additionally I found um, a skull clamp because I think it's going to be really nice as well. Um, in addition for the new artifacts that I found, um, I did find the Cyber Ship, which is a nice new um, vehicle from the Doctor Who series. There's a couple other little mana, um, you know, little vehicles in there, like two mana vehicles and such. Um, and I'll, I'll definitely look into those because it was a definitely a vehicle centered um, set. So I definitely want to still look into those. I, I, I'm, I know the vehicles I've chosen for this deck are, you know, they, they have good results, you know. Um, I would say the vehicle choices I have are a good mixture of some twos, um, you know, like Bank Buster, Smuggler's Copter, some of those that have some nice value, um, you know, and entail some good value, even like, um, like a plot, I, I believe it's, uh, oh god, what is it called? The one that, um, <laughs> the plowing, is it the plowing? I don't know, <laughs> excuse me. 
Excuse me. Now I have to look. <clears throat> but it's a two mana vehicle and um, when it attacks you actually produce um, three planes. Ah, oh, there it is, the Colossal Plow. So there's that. Yeah, that's a beast. That's a two mana beast right there. I think it has a crew six, so <laughs> that's a little crazy. But, so why do we play twos? Like, what's the point? I thought we were only going for like big, you know, big vehicles. Um, that's true. Um, we want to cast some too. And additionally, some of our um, vehicles will have good synergy with um, other vehicles on the battlefield, like our uh, our surge, uh, surge mech. We'll also um, be able to like deal damage upon how many vehicles we have. Surge Hacker Mech is the name of the card. And that will deal damage based on the number of vehicles on our battlefield. So, all in all, like, um, it's just a very fun deck, one that I um, enjoy playing very much. And um, we'll just kind of take a look through some of the vehicles here, kind of get an idea for the deck. Um, we definitely have a game plan here. I would say um, the game plan, I just want to just kind of zoom out just ever so slightly. There we go. Our game plan here is just to, uh, we want to, of course, put cards into our graveyard. Like, just like, we have like cards like Meyer Triton, Timurit Calls the Dead. Like, that mill strategy is good. I'd say that's our plan B. Our, our, our plan A is really, we're going to have like um, these selectively milled cards from our hand, which is nice, like a smuggler's copter. It seems very good. Um, additionally, we're going to be playing some two-mana creatures, um, like Guardian of New Banalia is a nice one. And um, there's also, um, there's also um, a spirit that also does the same kind of effect. So basically, they basically will loot cards on, basically on, on command with their effect. They'll just put a particular card in your graveyard. And um, that just works very well with Greasefang. It's just a nice selection of of uh, cars to put in your graveyard and um, vehicles, of course, so we can keep resurrecting them with uh, Grease Fang. Um, I stopped on, um, <coughs> excuse me, Yagmoth and Braids. These two cards are fantastic. These go along with La uh, Wrinkle, which is another sack outlet that we have. Um, all of them are fine choices. Uh, I like Yogmoth and Braids um, because they're going to work well with our Skull Clamp. We can basically attach that to a creature on end step, or you know, you know as our end step is going to unfold, we can um, go ahead and sack that and get the benefits um, uh, from the Skull Clamp. Braids, Braids, um, and Yogmoth work in a similar fashion, a little bit different because um, Yogmoth does just go ahead and sacrifice it, whereas. Um, Braids can also sacrifice other things as well. Uh, artifacts, creatures, enchantment, lands, or planeswalkers. So it's kind of cool. So both of those are very um, integral to this deck. There's just some very nice um, one value mana cards that have some very nice synergies with our, um, our deck. This will give all our vehicles menace and a creature that will help us crew our vehicles as well. Plus it's just a nice commander card because it just has a lot of value, right? You know, it basically does six damage um, over two turns and we gain um, two life. So that's nice. Uh, there's the Colossal Plow. Celestis is just kind of more like in, um, ways to get cards into our graveyard. Mesmeric, Mesmeric Orb is, <laughs> just uh, puts a lot of cards into the grave. Wukatai Soul Ripper. Fantastic uh, vehicle that's like for two mana that we can just sacrifice things we want to sacrifice and get like a more strong body on the battlefield it's really nice and it works with our sacrifice energy too for our vehicles some of our e vehicles that enter the battlefield triggers we can go ahead and sack them with a soul ripper um yeah we got there's the fleeting spirit i was mentioning that like that along with the guardian of new banalia that's gonna help us uh get there with um the cards in our hand um, we're gonna be going ahead and playing the fleeting spirit and be very evasive with this is a nice crew or two it's just fantastic and, um, you know, we're going to be discarding a card, discarding a vehicle um, when we please, and um, having this return. Um, you have to just be careful about end step because it goes end step to end step. So if you wanted this to come down on a certain time, you, you'll you have to um, make sure that you coordinate that. Um, you don't want this to kind of go away and then it not coming back if you want to crew something with it. So be careful with uh, the clauses and 
when it does return to um, the battlefield. <coughs> Here's this more um, nice sacrifice synergy and milling strategy with the butler. Eternal Wanderer is just a nice kind of, it can do that kind of um, blink thing with our vehicles. So it can make some of our vehicles stick, which is nice. And it's just another nice form of removal if we need it. Oh, Sky Sovereign this is like one of my favorite cards. It's so sick, man. And it's so much better with Grease Fang too, because it just like, just all of a sudden deals six damage. Like you could do six damage like, um, you know, one target or amongst like two targets. And it just gets in for some crazy flying damage. It's just such a cool card. Uh, big fan of the ship. Big, whoever made this card, you're very cool. Thank you, man. I really love it. I very, I appreciate this card very much. Screlly. Hot Shot Mechanic. These are just like very cool cards and good synergy. Meyer Triton, Takanuma. More big bad vehicles. Stitcher Supplier. These are our Entomb effects to Unmark Grave and Entomb itself. Those are going to just be putting in a um, card from our library directly into our graveyard. There's Deadly Rollick, which I mentioned. Mysterious Limousine, an MVP for this deck. Just, <coughs> excuse me. Does so well with tokens. Um, does so well with removing problematic um, pieces from our opponent's library. It's fantastic. Here's the tower, Ferguson Tower. Some good sacrifice synergy. Lobelia, she's a new one from the um, the new Lord of the Rings set. So I I think she's fantastic. She she's a good commander card, and I do have teleportation circle in here too. So. If we can like get that wombo combo going, it'd be fantastic. So uh, there's Lobelia. So what she does is um, she enters the battlefield. We look at the top card of each opponent's library and exile those cards face down. Then we sacrifice an artifact like a vehicle. <laughs> and then until end of turn, we can play that card exile with Lobelia without paying its mana cost. Or each opponent loses two life and gain two life its own. We're hoping we get something semi-decent under um, one of the opponent's graveyard, uh, libraries. Just something semi-decent, right? And uh, then we can cast it for free <laughs> when we do our Grease Fang thing. So it's fantastic. has good synergy with our deck. Peace Walker Colossus, just a big baddie, three colorless 6-6. Six, six. And what's really fun about this one, it turns all your vehicles like into just artifact creatures. You won't even have to crew them any longer for one colorless in the plains. It's just an absolute monster. Super sick card. Thunderhawk Gunship. And just another sweet, like, kind of Eskis Chariot vibe. You get those tokens, those 2-2 two -two tokens with Vigilance. Um, and whenever this thing attacks, attacking creatures of control gain flying until the turn. So it's like a Moonshaker Cavalry. Yeah, Street Corn. Mask of Memory. These are just very common cards. The Weatherlight is a fine castable vehicle and if if it's not the, it's not the worst if this is your grease fang hit either it's just gonna help you dig deeper and get to those bigger cards that you need so i'm a big fan of weather i think it's a fine four mana card <coughs> some talisman from hannah meat hood massacre not a ship another fantastic vehicle no ends of vehicles boss citadel just a fantastic card agadim's awakening palantir orn think this is just more of the newer stuff, right guys? More of the newer um, technology that we can just kind of draw cards in our Orzhov deck or, you know, catch a unsuspecting opponent that may not know how this works. Maybe mill four cards into our library or into our graveyard and then kill the opponent like in one shot. I mean, it's totally possible with like all the high mana cards we have in here. So here's the cyber ship. So cyber ship deals combat. Um, this is, this is, um, this one they have to do um, the combat damage. Um, and it's not like the, um, the gun, the gunship, but this is the newer car from the Doctor Who. It's a, it's a big fatty car, 8-8. Eight, eight. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be getting in and we're going to be getting those two twos. So that's kind of nice. <clears throat> and tomb. There's a Surge Hacker Mac. We love this card. Fantastic. Teleportation Circle. Fantastic. Love it. Radodravic. Just another awesome card for this deck. Just gives all our legendaries, like, superhuman powers and um, also, like, our legendary artifacts, too, to a degree. 
You're gonna have like more perhelions if you wanted. Some wombo bomb wombo bombo combos there. Village Rites, Castle Lockling, Guardian Nubinalia, Season Hollow Blade. Um, yeah, Season Hollow Blade, this is like our another kind of selectively mill card. So we have three with the selfless what is it, this that spirit name will ever get, always get me, but we got the Guardian, the Season Hollow Blade, and the Spirit that will help us discard a card into our graveyard on at will. There's Rankle, what a fantastic card. Just it's so perfect for this deck. We get in for that combat damage with our vehicle, and then we get to hit the modes and we get to sacrifice that vehicle so we can have a keep recurring. Just a complete disaster for our opponents. Luris, just some more graveyard value. Egon, one of my favorites. I love playing the backside. The uh, throne on turn one. It's just a great just helps us give it over get us over the finish line. Just every little every little ounce, right? Every little ounce of um, milling cards, every little ounce of discarding cards into our um, our graveyard, just helps us get us get us like one step closer, you know. So <clears throat> we love Egon, just fantastic. This is <clears throat> one of the more stronger cards in um, this particular deck is the Smuggler's Buggy. I would say like kind of in order of what I think of hits when I think of like Grease Fang. Okay, so, and it's not, this is not the order, but I'd say like there's like a top four where how you want to go about doing this. And um, there's reasonings why. And obviously it just, it kind of depends on what kind of mood you're in too, you know? So let's just go over these here. Yeah, so this is kind of like, kind of what we're looking at right here. And I would say, like, in, if you're just, like, going to do the thing and, like, it's your first time, you know, coming and, you know, you're rocking out, um, Grease Fang out on your first time at your LGS and you're, you know, really excited for the, the Parhelion combo, then, yeah, you're going to be doing that the first time you go around with this and you're going to be having a blast. You're going to be making those angel tokens. Um, you're going to be smacking all your opponents around with some crazy flying angels and uh, it's going to be super fun, right? you're probably going to win the game. Um, so if, if that novelty kind of wears out, um, then you can, you can go for different, you know, game plans. I'd say this is like, if you're playing in a more competitive format, you're going to go for the Parhelion probably just because you're going to get that board state. You're going to be a threat, but you're not going to be such like a combo oriented threat that you're just going to have to be a must kill. You're just going to kind of be so maybe swinging strategically at your, um, maybe the more dangerous opponents and getting them out. Whereas, um, you know, you're not gonna be like, uh, really focused on combo killing the entire table at once. So, <coughs> Parhelion is a great choice. So it's definitely one of the top ones. I'd say um, Necron Monolith and the Reaver Titan kind of like have a similar, um, you know, spot. I, I think the Necron Monolith kind of edges it out slightly because when this attacks, you're actually going to mill three cards as well. So it's going to keep your graveyard train flowing. So if you don't have a sack outlet for the Necron, at least you're able to mill into your graveyard and um, get that value. So that's kind of nice, right? So that's kind of a nice option for this deck. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault you for just going right into a Reaver Titan because this thing just kills people like... You know, this, this, is, this is just another way or another route you could take and you're not going to be sad about it. So you're going to love the Reaver Titan too. And uh, so it's just a seven colorless artifact vehicle. Protection manual value from three or less. That's very revel relevant. It's very hard for opponents to interact to this card. And when it ever attacks, it deals five damage to each opponent. And it's a 10-10. It's crazy. And honestly, this uh, this crazy four mana card is just out of out of it's out of its mind out of the graveyard. It doesn't even know what's going on. What what way is left? What way is right? It's like the Willy Wonka, uh, you know, the boat. Yes, the Willy Wonka boat that is really trippy, right? This is the same exact thing with Grease Fang, and um, the reason why is that. Um, this thing's not affected by summoning sickness with a grease fang. So it's gonna enter the battlefield. You're gonna just gonna go ahead and do the thing over here where you're gonna hide away four. 
just like this. You're gonna um, basically look in here, see if anything's sweet. Of course I bricked, so, but not exactly. Hey, we'll take a dark ritual, it's fine. It could have been better, but. Then we're just gonna go swinging with it, like immediately, because it has a low crew cost. And then uh, we're gonna be casting what's underneath. Like, it's a great RNG card. And, uh, I, I mean, I already took all my bombs out, so, you know, how could it be, like, how could it hit? So, it still hits a dark ritual, that's fine. But yeah, you can see why the smuggler's um, buggy is just crazy. Yeah, and it just pops back to our hand. All the vehicles pop back that um, Grease Fang pulls out of the yard at the end of the turn, but this thing, once it uh, once it deals the damage, it just comes, pops back right to your hand, so. Um, I think we got pretty through like most of the deck here. I mean, yeah, we were just Timurek Calls the Dead, the Signet. Like I said, we have some other kind of just high market in the Frixian Tower, some nice fetch lands there, or um, shock lands. So all in all, this is a very fun deck to play. Um, I'd say it's kind of more on the low budget side too. It's not so bad. The vehicles are all like very affordable, I'd say. Some of the, the Warhammer vehicles are a little more pricey, <laughs> but not like crazy expensive. So, and the lamp, the mana base isn't that bad either for Orzhov. So, I mean, you're not looking like, you're not like looking like a, like you're gonna bust the bank. And um, you're just gonna have a nice like casual deck. I'm like, super casual, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that is my, Casual, strong, grease bank deck. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of look at some hands here. Before we go, just kind of get an idea of what we're working here. Kind of a nice opening there with the Egon. And the mech, the mech land is very nice. This is a cool little land here. Mech hanger, some nice little tech here. Add a color, so add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only cast a pilot or vehicle spell. It's nice. And then also we'll turn our vehicles into artifact creatures. With that. It's kind of a cool interaction. So this looks nice already. See if we can get like, um, like maybe a signet or like a village rights would be kind of cool. High market. Or even like, um, I mean, with that we have a vehicle in our hand, like a, even like a, like a guardian of um, New Benalia would be cool. One of those, Selective mill cards. Lurus, cool. And uh, a swamp. So we would draw for our turn, and it's a mask of memory, that's kind of fun. So uh, what we would do here is we would just go ahead and play our swamp. Swamp is engaged. We would play our throne. It's a great, it's a great turn one play. Okay, so there's the throne. So, well, at the beginning of our upkeep, we'll mill a card. Okay, it's our turn again. Okay, we're gonna mill a card. It's an Entomb. Oh no. Oh no. Our best card. That's okay. We've fallen it up with a, a huge hit. We'll go ahead and shock this Godless Shrine in. I say it's huge because I'm telling you, it's gonna, it's probably just gonna make the difference. Just these two mill cards, like, just taking this, like, just slightly over the edge, right? Just these little, little tiny things. It's just putting a little more things in our graveyard to get that grease thing ready. You know, because we're playing 99 cards and we don't have like a million entomb effects. So we got to get there with grease thing, right? We got to find a way to get there. So just these extra mills hopefully will get us to what we need to be. So that's right, unfortunate. See, we're still not there. So we basically have one hit here, you know, to before the next turn to see if we can get where we're going, right? So our turn three comes along. We're gonna go ahead and mill this card into our, our library, our graveyard. Unfortunately, it's a land. And I have, I've put a lot of vehicles. Sometimes you're gonna hit, sometimes you're not. Sometimes Grease Fangs is gonna be ready on three, and sometimes it won't be. So what we do have, we don't have any things for Lurus to hit either yet, unfortunately. So our probably our best bet <coughs> is probably just still to play Grease Fang. <clears throat> where we could look to keep setting up Grease Fang um, with our Meyer Triton with like a Mask of Memory. It's probably a good try. 
probably a good idea. Um, we do have some mills that are going to be coming anyways from the throne, but I don't hate that idea to not get our commander out just yet. Not really doing anything yet. So we go ahead and play our Mask of Memory. The Mire Train does have Death Touch, so I don't really know if anyone's going to really want to trade with it. Hopefully we have an open opponent. Of course, this would all be hypothetical. You know, we could just adjust our gameplay. But if we did have an open opponent, we can go ahead and swing with a Mire Triton with a Mask of Memory. This is on attack, I believe. Oh no, it has to deal damage to a player. So if we do the, do the damage, if we do the damage, then we would draw two and this discard one. Okay, so I think the play would be to just go ahead and we could probably go for the weatherlight. Yeah, probably the best bet to like make sure we do have a card in the yard for Grease Fang, at least a, a vehicle of some sort. So we'll move to our next turn here. Everything is fine, we're moving pretty well. We kind of whiffed um, to a degree, unfortunate. We'll mill a card in the graveyard. That's a cyber ship. So we have some good choices for Grease Fang now. Go ahead and play the mech hanger. Um, we'll go ahead and try to resolve Grease Fang first in this sequence. So hopefully play Grease Fang. Not moving to combat yet. And then what we could also do is play you know, probably supposedly, probably the best option there actually was to um, just play the high market there. We didn't really need to play our um, Hamek Hanger yet. We could actually sacrifice a creature with this, which would be nice. Um, so the thing is, is like, are we satisfied with those, those um, you know, cards in our graveyard? They're pretty decent. I mean, you could even go for like a Shriekhorn and really spin the wheel, you know, and put you know, some more cards into our um, graveyard. But, um, you know, look for like a Perhelion or something. But I think it's pretty good. So we go to combat and um, I think we're pretty good just to go right for the cyber ship. Probably what we do. And um, just crew it up with our guys here. Could even um, put the Mask of Memory on it and equip that as well. Cause it's probably gonna get in, right? 8-8 eight, eight flyer. Make some dudes. Uh, and then also do some cards, some kind of just with a mask, do some draw and discard. So, and then of course we'd sacrifice it on end step and um, it would go back to our graveyard. And we'll just kind of cycle those out. So, all in all, a great showing. I would say that this is exactly what the deck is looking to do. It's looking to get those extra little um, pushes here with cards like um, the Meyer Triton and the Throne of Death. It, that's exactly what I want, you know. Um, we want to keep on kind of looting through the deck, finding those um, synergies. I think it's real close, guys, like just for kind of what I'm looking for. So um, I will go ahead and post a list on Mockfield and I'll post it in the comments. But um, of course, everyone, thank you so much for all, all the views you've given me in the last couple of weeks. It's been very exciting. And I look to keep up, uh, keep it, keep the momentum going. So I'll see you later. Bye.